lately, I've been really into watching adventure motorcycle riders on YouTube and fascinated with the different adventure bikes on the road. I have a couple issues with getting an adventure bike. One, my health isn't the best. You know of my knee, and uh, that has really somewhat rearranged my life. Number two, in our area riding mo motorcycles on the road, it's not the safest area to ride a motorcycle. I thought an adventure bike would be a good combination to ride it on the road and a little bit off the road. Uh, really into, I think it's a Husqvarna 901. And I've also researched the Honda Africa Twin, which uh, is an amazing motorcycle. The reality is, in my near future, I'm not buying a motorcycle. I've come to the realization is that um, at my age and my size, it's not the best thing that I should be focusing on riding on the street. We'll see if that changes. Also, if I ride off-road, I don't think that's a good scenario uh, in case I fall. As you know, I went over the handlebars twice on my ATV, one in, once in my yard, once on the trail, and then I had the ATV roll over. My intent was to um, focus on my property and not really focus on riding off-road. But I thought my, my Razor Trail was enough for me. And I'd focus on my property and I'd have the Razor Trail to be with the, with the, the trail rangers, uh, you know, riding with them maybe once a month and they are the best guys in the world to ride with. Late last fall, I posted part of a video where I rode Majestic Lost Trails on that 50 inch Polaris. And it was just a beautiful ride. The trail was covered with leaves. Beautiful day. And I realized how much I missed trail riding, especially with the trail rangers. Also, uh, the issue with my knee. Um, I did start working around my property eight weeks after I realized my knee went on me and basically bone on bone on my left knee and uh, I, I was well enough where I could start working around my property hobbling. If you watch my videos and even though I think at times I'm not hobbling, I look at a video and I'm bumping around, a little embarrassed by it. And I thought to myself, you know what? I, I can't work around, when I'm working around my property two days on a weekend, cutting down trees or doing something, my knee was getting worse. I can't buy a street bike or ride a street bike because I'm worried about the safety issues and the learning curve to me getting adjusted to riding on the street or in the woods on a motorcycle. And I missed the trail. So what was the next best thing for me? I can't believe I did it, frankly. I purchased a Honda Talon X. In 2019, we call him, I don't use, like to use my friend's last names. In 2019, Steve Talon, I name him after the machines, showed up for the first time with his 2019 Honda Talon Red and Mikey, Godfather of Mud, and I, the machine looked amazing on the trailer when we first saw it. Mikey and I had never seen a Honda Talon up close. It wasn't so much the body on the Honda Talon. Uh, I think it's a nice looking machine and I'll, I'll put up a picture. I think it looks like the monkey's car from the 60s television show. And the more I look at the picture, I got off the internet the more I think it looks like the car, 
basically it's the front end is similar the slope of the vehicle is similar but really it's the roof line it pinches in in the front front flares out in the back and it's slightly tapered down and his is red which is how i remember the monkey car and i and i that's the first thing i think of the design of the body but the fascination was the engine no cvt let me show you the engine we just stood at this engine and transmission and were amazed by it this is a two-cylinder engine which i believe is essentially the honda africa twin engine dual clutch transmission which is i believe similar to the africa twin i think that's a six speed transmission uh, might be reconfigured i think it's also very close if not the same transmission essentially in the honda pioneer notice that those of the you that ride off-road on cvt machines there's no big plastic cover where the primary and secondary clutches on a C cvt transmission um it's gear drive it's a dual clutch an example porsches are dual clutch most porsches considered an automatic transmission are dual clutch transmissions they perform extremely well S S honda steve talon or steve talon let me drive his honda talon i could have driven it much longer but i only drove it around the parking lot at one of our trails and i was fascinated by the engine and transmission if you are riding off-road on a cvt machine and drive a honda talon it will totally blow your mind especially woods riding blow your mind as far as the experience of having gears in the machine that shift and not the high rpm of a cvt engine and just driving it around the parking lot listening and feeling that dual clutch slapping back and forth up shifting and down shifting just stuck in my mind and i've always been fascinated by this machine and it's been around i think 2019 was the first year they came out with it maybe 2018. it's always fascinated me the way honda had made an automatic transmission dual clutch with paddle shifters on it which i will probably never use for for off-road and put it in a side-by-side -side market and this was Honda was late coming to the game and watching Steve run his on the trail and he's an excellent off-road driver watching him handle the machine off-road and and knowing the Honda, the history of Honda quality and basically it's a Honda Africa twin engine in it and I said maybe this is a step let's see how this step goes to getting into a Honda, seeing how it is off the road, off road, checking the quality of the machine, and seeing if I like the experience. I have ridden it off road. I'm gonna post that video soon, maybe this weekend, my first trail ride with it. Um, I probably don't talk as much on the video that some of you might be used to. I was just in awe most of the time. Just, just was a totally different off-road riding experience. Those of you who ride geared motor, motorcycles usually have gears. Those of you who ride geared motorcycles off-road would get into this and say, oh, you know, it has geared transmissions like a motorcycle. Or if you have an ATV, a Honda that has gears that you shift, you wouldn't be so taken back by the performance or the experience of driving this off-road. People who have machines with CVT transmissions in it, if they step out of a CVT machine and into a Honda Talon, I think a lot of you would be like me and just blown away how different the experience is. 
the best way I can phrase it, the, I'll try to put it in words, is that it's, it's, it's calm. It's calm. This transmission wants to upshift and knock the RPMs down. So in a CVT transmission, most of the time, the engine is revving much higher, keeping that belt tension, keeping it in the engine and transmission in the torque curve. And this machine is shifting up to knock the RPMs down. So it's a much quieter experience uh, because the engine isn't turning at such high PM, RPMs and you, you don't hear as much engine noise. You also don't hear the clutch noise that you hear on a CVT transmission. Just a totally, I, guys, some of you know how sincere I am. It is just a totally different experience that uh, I enjoyed tremendously. It, it was probably my biggest surprise of riding off-road was this machine on the trail. So enough babbling. I'll do a quick walk around on this machine. Um, I went for the X, which is 64 inches wide and a little shorter than their R model, which is 68 inches wide. The, the Talon X, which I have, is 64 inches wide. I wanted the narrower machine because in our area, the trails are narrow. They're mostly, almost, they're all woods trails. Some fire roads, but mostly woods trails. Also, I could probably fit a 68 inch wide machine on my trailer, but it's tight where this gives me a little more room on my trailer. I didn't want to upgrade the trailer on my machine. Upgrades that I did on the machine, I have aluminum front and rear bumpers. I also have the door panels on the machine. But if you've been watching my channel, you know that my first, first accessory to put on an off-road machine that I recommend is a winch. It's got a 3,500 pound worn winch on it. You need to be able to get yourself out of trouble and you also need to be able to help others. The second priority on off-road machines, in my opinion, is some people call them Nerf bars. I call them rock sliders. Uh, these help kick you out from trees along the trail, rocks on the trail. I really think they're essential at, at protecting your machines. Bumpers, I put them on. You know, you will back up and might hit a sapling. Someone could bump into the back of your machine. Um, I really think bumper, bumpers are m more useful when you're maneuvering the machine in your garage trying to park it. You're bumping into the walls and other machines in your garage. And I do have a storage box, a Honda storage box, which I have to install on the back. I don't know if I'll post a video on doing that, but I will install that. Uh, one thing I did not have on the trail was a storage box. Uh, my machines, I, I need storage when I'm on the trail. Second was I needed a rear view mirror because this does not have cameras on it. The specs on the machine, 104 horsepower. You would think for a sport side-by-side, that's not a lot of horsepower. They say that a CVT transmission loses 20 to 30% of the engine power through the belts and clutches on the CVT machine, CVT machine. I will tell you, and you guys know that I've had turbo razors and I had a turbocharged Razor Pro. Razor Pro was 181 horsepower. This machine feels so much more powerful than 104 horsepower. Some people have said it's, it got, feels like it has 140 horsepower, like similar to a Turbo Razor XP. Um, I would agree 100% with that. The low end torque on this engine with the gears is astonishing to me. It's a real performer. I did not intend to get the Fox Live valve, because you know I don't really drive aggressively fast on the trail. I, I didn't know if I wanted the Fox Live valve. 
in our area, purchasing a Honda Talent is, I'll say, not the greatest experience. Um, dealers either don't have them in stock or Honda doesn't give them a choice on what talents they're going to get. It's either we're going to send you these two models and if you don't want them, we're sending them to someone else and they won't get a Honda Talon for that month or whatever the delivery cycle is. I asked dealers if they could order me a Honda Talon. All of them said, we can't order you a Honda Talon. Honda just sends us, gives us an option to take what they want to send us. And if we don't take it, then they'll sell it to the next dealer. So we just grab it. Unfortunately for me, looking for an X, most of the dealers are getting ours in this area. For a time, I don't know if this is still true, Honda was only sending X's to Canada and no R's. And X's and R's, the 64 inch wide X, the 68 inch R, to America and other places. Kind of unfair to Canadians, but it's mostly woods trails up in Canada. I did not want an R, it's a beautiful machine. It's a little heavier than this. It's also longer in the wheelbase as well as wider. I think an R would ride much better, but there was not really any choice to get an X, for me to find an X, and then one that did not have the Fox Live valve on it. So this dealer, this dealer that I purchased it from, and it was hard. I put this purchase off for years because my main dealer for off-road riding equipment did not sell them. And it was hard for me not to buy something from them. Um, so I put this purchase off. And actually, I told them I'd be purchasing it before I actually purchased it. So this was the only X that I could find in our area. It was a live valve. I really like the color. Of course, I would have liked the red, uh, but I really like the blue, um, especially on the interior. But the blue and silver, I really liked. Uh, I said, you know what, I'll try the live valve, and I ended up buying, purchasing the machine. I will tell you, after riding it on the trail, the Fox live valve uh, a suspension is phenomenal. Very nice ride. Also, I think the suspension doesn't sag. Honda says this has 12 inches of clearance underneath. This is 12 plus inches underneath the chassis. And I, I'm thinking that it's because of the Fox Live Valve suspension. Give you a little look on this side. I should probably show you this suspension. I will do I will do a more detailed walkthrough on the machine in a future video, but it's not. <laughs> I think it's very attractive on the outside. The seats are are really sporty. Not a lot of bling on the interior. Of course, I'm used to the ride command, which would sit right here in the center. Change for 2022 in the design for Honda was taking the instrument cluster out of the center of the dash and putting it behind the steering wheel, which it's not a big instrument cluster. It's more than enough for the riding I'm doing. Um, and I, I do think it's an improvement. I think I just want to show you a startup. So, I made a mistake when I started it. You're supposed to turn the key, wait for a light to go off, and then start to turn the key all the way to start it. I didn't do that. Um, it starts a little better than what it did. It sounds very similar to an Africa Twin. Those of you who have the Africa Twin, or ride that people ride with people who have them, 
sounds very much like it. It is at high idle now and it will drop down to low idle. I don't know why someone would change the exhaust on this machine. I like it that it's quiet on the trail when you're revving it. It is, it is throaty. I, I like the sound of it. Of course, people can change what they want on off-road machines. Um, I think it idles, it will drop down to idle about 800 RPM. We're expecting a blizzard, <laughs> which is surprising because weather people in our area don't often use the word a blizzard. I was 12 years old during the blizzard of 77 and not so much snow, but that blizzard wind drifts the snow as high in our area, as high as 20 feet. People could actually touch turn signals during the blizzard of 77. It actually buried a back hole at our office that was trying to dig out a snow drift. It buried it in the snow. So I, I don't want to pull it outside because of that. Our weather's changing rapidly. Marauders, so that's it. Excited about running it on the trail. We'll see if our weather calms down, if I can get it on some winter rides and uh, share the experience with you. As always, thank you for coming back to my channel. I truly appreciate that you're taking the time out of your busy day to watch my videos. Those of you that comment are fantastic. I love going through your comments. I love responding to them. Some of you are very smart and help me with things and uh, and you keep me honest. And I thank you for commenting when you watch a video. And also please subscribe, share it with a friend. And if you like the video, I hope you'll hit the like button. I'm, I'm gonna be on the trail. I hope to see you on the trail, guys. Stay, if those of you in the Northeast that are probably gonna get some of this blizzard, uh, I hope you fare well through this inclement weather. God bless and take care.